If you roll a pair of dice and add up the total, you'll get some number between 2 and 12. Of course, some of those totals are more likely than others. For example, rolling a 6 is much more likely than rolling a 12, because there are 5 ways for the total to be 6, and only 1 for the total to be 12. We can visualize the full probability distribution of all possible outcomes with this diagram, where the column of dice pairs above each number represents all ways to roll that number. I'm sure most of you are probably familiar with this. However, I stumbled upon a very interesting question recently, and I thought I'd share it with you. Let's represent our pair of dice with this table, where we have a row for each die and a column for each side of the die. I'll color the two dice differently now, because what we're going to do is erase all numbers on our pair of dice and try to relabel each side of each die with a positive integer so that when we roll the new pair and add up the numbers, we get the same probability distribution of all possible totals as with the normal pair of dice. Is this possible? Pause the video now if you want to think about it. Amazingly, it is possible. Here's the solution. For example, there are still three ways to roll a 4. 1 and 3, 3 and 1, and the other 3 and 1. Notice how the green die has duplicate sides of 2 and 3. My challenge to the viewers is quite simple. We're going to add two more sides to each die and ask the same question. So here we have a normal pair of 8-sided dice, each side is labeled 1 through 8. And for those of you curious, yes, you can make these dice in real life, each side is in the shape of a triangle. With 8-sided dice, you get this probability distribution of outcomes for the totals. And now we play the same game. Can we construct a new pair of 8-sided dice with positive integers on each side, such that the probability distribution of all possible totals is the same as with normal 8-sided dice? This is episode 2 in a series I'm calling Brainstorm, where I pose puzzle-style math problems and compile together solutions from viewers. As with puzzle number 1, I will be accepting your solutions by email for 31 days starting today, and in a couple months I'll post a follow-up discussing these different approaches. For this particular problem, I'm more interested in how you came up with your solution than the solution itself, since if there is such a pair of 8-sided dice, a correct solution can easily be verified without any details as to the search process for finding it, as I showed in the video with the 6-sided case. The more interesting thing here is that search process. And to reiterate what I said in the video for puzzle number 1, for those of you who maybe just have some initial thoughts or approaches without a full solution, submit whatever you have. The emphasis here is on community engagement, and for everyone to try their hand at solving challenging problems. Before we end the video, I just wanted to say I've been completely shocked by the amount and quality of community interaction thus far with this project. I really couldn't have hoped for anything more, and it makes me super excited to continue with these videos. Right now, I'm in the process of making the follow-up for puzzle number one, and it should hopefully be ready about a month from now. As I'm showing this little sneak peek on the screen, I'll tell you there was some really unexpected and beautiful math that came from your submissions, and I can't wait to show it to you. Until then, have fun working on this dice puzzle, and I'll see you next time.